Hey guys, how's it going? So today we're going to be doing a little bit more garden maintenance uh, in a different area of the garden. So what I'm doing is kind of a five part series to show you how we have our garden organized into sections or zones. We have five zones around our house and we uh, look at one of those zones one of the days of the work week. This whole organization system came about because things were just getting so overwhelming because I just really was looking at the garden as a whole instead of smaller sections. Once I put them into zones or smaller sections, bite-sized pieces, it really started to kind of fall into place and we were able to keep on top of things so much easier without letting all the other things that I was seeing in the garden kind of flood in um, and take over, if that makes sense. So like yesterday, we worked in Monday zone, which involves the flower bed starting at the back sun porch stairs around the west side of the house and around the front where the limelight hydrangeas are. Also this flower bed here, the flower bed that starts on the west side, the end of it there and comes all the way down it includes the vegetable garden and the area around the greenhouse. So I explained in detail a little bit more yesterday um, how the system works. We'll link that video down below. Basically, we just look at each zone for weeds, deadheading, and just general stuff. Just like uh, if the wind was blowing the night before, we pick up branches or leaves or that sort of thing. It's no big projects. It's just like the little things that add up if you don't take care of them on a regular basis. I also showed you this, which is just an overhead printout from Google Earth of our house. Um, and then I showed you how we have it all broken up into zones. Each color represents a day of the week, which I have delineated right there. So Monday is blue. So we took care of that. Tuesday zone, this is what we're gonna do today, is in yellow. So the back sun porch flower bed, the area around the kitchen, the fireplace, and the brick patio. So basically I'm standing right here. We're gonna be taking care of this flower bed here all around the fireplace, the brick patio out there, and this flower bed right here. Also, I'm gonna do, this is not something I normally do in a zone, but I am going to tighten up these boxwood spirals, remove the impatience, and I'm gonna pop some violas in. Just a super simple, quick project. So I just wanna walk you through really quick this whole area, kinda of show you what's going on and what I'm looking for today. So let's kinda of start out here. What I look for is any insect issues. So I'll check the supertunia, see if there's any aphid issues. I don't think there is, but that's the thing. We just wanna keep on top of it and keep looking at stuff. Uh, we'll be picking up you know, some of the seed pods that have blown, uh, any deadheading or trimming that we need to do. I've got a whole bunch of hostas in this bed. Let me pop back here. So there's a whole bunch that really just needs to be cleaned up. That's the kind of stuff we're looking for. Just dead leaves, anything that's looking a little tired. We're going to check the drip by this right here. Uh, this whole bed needs just a once over. See those? These poor hostages just get nailed by wind. Uh, but we're just going to make them look a lot better today. And as we come out this direction, we'll just do a check of everything in this area, all of the containers. I'll probably space the containers a little bit. It's just a really good way to do little changes to improve the quality of life for these plants as they grow. Boy, that James Britannia looks awesome. That's Safari Dawn. It's a new plant for next year and I am absolutely thrilled with this plant. I don't think we're gonna need to do very much in the way of anything in the butterfly garden. It's totally full and wonderful. If you plant things full like this, you just don't get weeds. Just, they don't have room. What I'll probably do is weed around these boxwoods. These are all going. All the boxwoods I'm gonna move out to the new property. They're all still being drip irrigated, but they were part of a different plan at one time. And then this part here, all the back stuff is part of a different zone. Swinging around, so this is the area around the fireplace. We're gonna go through here. There's some um, hookerellas I need to groom. Room. I may need to do some deadheading. These are the carding mill roses that were in front of the gazebo and I transplanted them this spring and all three of them look so good. I'm just so happy about that. I think they look great underneath the angel statue. We did remove the Japanese maple. It ended up not really thriving. It had a few little leaves on it, but the view, let me show you the view. The view from the fireplace area yeah, I didn't want that marred by anything. <laughs> We're gonna keep all of our plantings low in here so that we can see the Hartley. Okay, coming back out this way, we've got our roses here. They're looking pretty good. I don't think I'm gonna have to do very much in the way of deadheading, but there's a few little weeds we'll take care of. Uh, grass edging is also something we look at, but it's looking pretty sharp. I don't think I'm gonna need to do any, uh, any maintenance there. I might need to clean like that little section up there, but see if you do like little bits at a time, it never becomes out of control problem. I need to groom up the hellebores over here. Double up pink begonia is looking awesome. This is one of my favorite views of the garden. Right through here. We'll do some hosta cleanup. Uh, there's some newly noir coleus that I need to deadhead a bit. 
spider webs on the box that I'll just brush those off. And then as we move this way, you can see just a bunch of perennials. I actually am going to take a look at everything on this table as well. You might remember I put this together early on. I have one lemon cypress that I need to toss. It did not survive. Uh, and then I need to groom up the lungwort down here. But other than that, everything's okay. Really, this whole view is looking pretty good right now. Not too shabby. I need to groom up some scorched leaves right here. The sun barrels through just like right here at one part of the day and kind of <laughs> poor plants. Like I don't know to plant for shade or sun because it's mostly shade except for one little window of the day. Uh, we've got some beautiful lambs here right here. I actually cleaned these up the other night when Samantha and I were out here. I try to do little things as we're, do, you know, walking around. I just will grab a leaf or two that looks bad and it really does help to do little, like small consistent things. Um, the Limetta hydrangeas in here are doing so much better this year. And I think it's because Aaron's been so on it with, with the chelated iron. But you see, I, I incorporated some Wicked Witch Coleus which is also what I have right here with the Japanese an anemones are blooming now right above. It's so beautiful, I love this area. Got a couple of containers. These are the hardy nymph gladiolus, which came up with leaves, but no blooms. I don't know. Just kind of waiting on those. There's Russell. Hey, Russell. Hi, kitty, kitty, kitty. Hey, bud. And that's pretty much a look at this area. Oh, I didn't really talk about this. Um, this area really doesn't need a whole lot. I'm going to cut back the bleeding hearts, which are looking very weary from all the heat and wind. But other than that, I think it's pretty good. This area is about to see some major change. So I have a hedge of Munstead Lavender right here, which I love. Uh, Surefire Rose Begonias. I had some Coconut Nemesia right here. Our grass water oversprays this flower bed pretty hard, and it's hard to get anything to look really good right at the edge. So I still have to figure that out. But we are bringing electric and water to the Hartley right over here. In order to do that, we have to come straight down the sidewalk, which is okay because it's kind of this weird narrow area anyway. Uh, we wanted to redo it. I didn't really think I was gonna be redoing it this quickly, but we're just gonna have the concrete torn up so that the trench can come right through here, right along here, and then We'll tear this concrete up too. Um, we will probably wait on the bricks until next season just because everything's looking pretty nice right now. Um, so they can trench right along here and I might just put mulch down in the walkway for now until we're ready. We do wanna widen up this whole area. I think we're gonna remove this kind of random, it's like a random fence section. It starts here, stops there. And this is where we park our vehicles, which I don't love, it's not ideal. I would love to have room in the barn. We need to organize <laughs> so that we could park them in there Either way, um, we would like to maybe remove this and widen this whole area up so that it's easy to get things, you know, carts to and from the cars, groceries to and from the cars. But I really like this area quite a lot. And I've got all my tools right here. So a couple pairs of clippers, my kneeling pad, kangaroo pop-up bag, my blower, and hedge trimmers. I don't think I'm gonna need these today, but I got them just in case. All right, so let's get after it.
got it all done. It takes just about an hour to do each zone. I think I've got it divided pretty equally. And that's the thing, when you are initially trying to organize your space, you kind of have to consider what's in each area. And so some areas may be way bigger, but they have far less to do in that specific spot. Um, this one is a pretty condensed area. There's a lot of flower beds right here, but it always feels good to get this one done in particular because we walk by this one so much during the day. So I'll just walk you back through and show you everything we got done. And I'm going to try to remember this in order, but I think I started right here. <laughs> been groomed up the hostas, cut back the bleeding hearts, did some general just clean up around the base of perennials, deadheaded the coleus and the roses that are here. And then I swung around the back side of this bed, which is not that full. This has been a really interesting spot and I've kind of um, held off on planting it just because I know it's gonna change. This whole area is gonna change a little bit and probably not right in this immediate spot, but I just kind of, I shy away from planting areas. I know I'm gonna have to dig up and remove a bunch of plants because I do that a lot, it seems like. Anyway, cleaned up the hostas back here. They kind of swing around the back side of this viburnum, which is something I dug up and moved from behind the gazebo this spring. Then I just took a look at this area. This didn't need anything. I didn't do a single dang thing. Now I did underplant these um, hydrangeas earlier this spring. I don't even know what variety of hookah this is, but I went and picked these up when we were planting the pond area last fall and I just carried them over all winter because I didn't have space for all of them. And so they're actually underneath all these hydrangeas and they've done really well. This side of the flower bed didn't really require much maintenance. I did need to um, groom up the hostas. Those always require maintenance every week. I did uh, remove suckers from the bottom of this lilac. Do you guys remember what this lilac looked like? It is so much better <laughs> after I got that major prune job done. I mean, before, for those of you guys who didn't see that video, I did film when I, um, pruned all of the suckers and stuff out of the middle and opened up the structure of this lilac and it's doing really well. I'm really thankful. Uh, but it does sprout suckers up and that's what had happened. It just kept doing that and nobody was really keeping up on it. So it kind of took over after a while. Then I went this way. I deadheaded the coleus in the pots. There were some weeds in this area, but not many. A little bit of weeds in there. In this bed, I cut back the hookerellas. I started to groom them and I just decided a full cutback was required. Uh, the carding mill roses, I deadheaded. There were some weeds in here. I have bindweed in this bed, like particularly bad in this section. So I had to pull some back in there. If I keep up on it, it never really gets ahead of us, which is nice, but I'm reluctant to spray anything in my flower beds. So we just continue to pull it. I did a light deadhead on these roses. Like I didn't go in to the center. I kind of just did all the stuff up front. That's the stuff we see anyway. I uh, pulled some weeds right up front, cleaned up that little bit of grass section that needed it. I did prune a couple of tree branches. One was coming over and it was all connected to the trellis over here where the uh, clematis is and one was hanging pretty low. Cleaned up the hosta here and the hellebores in this area. I actually cut one of them. You can see a little bit of it left. I cut one of them back because it was all flopped over and looked bad. Cleaned up the hostas in the middle and then just did the same thing throughout this whole area. Deadhead of the coleus, except for one. I see I missed one, dang it. Cleaned these up right here. They didn't need much. And you know, on the hostas, if they have just a little bit of leaf burn, I don't usually remove the leaves because I don't wanna take the whole plant down. If I did that, a lot of the hostas would have to come out altogether. Um, they just, by this time of year, get tired out. I groomed up a couple of pots down here, the fern and the lungwort. I popped the dead cypress out and put the cypress that was down here, up here, so that's good. Groomed up some uh, perennials right in this area. Really didn't need much in this space. When you plant thick like this, well, yeah, it's just like the butterfly garden. You plant thick, you just don't get weeds and there's just not as much maintenance. It's really nice. I did pop a couple of more uh, brown looking hydrangea blooms off. Then I popped over here, groomed up the hostas. There's a couple in there. I had two violas left from the other uh, container project I did today. So I popped those right there, which really that's all the side of the pot we can see. There's a clematis in here, a happy jack, I think. Um, I think that's, or jolly good, I can't remember. But either way, these violas usually do really well in this pot. I have hellebores in here, which are glorious for a couple months out of the year. Maybe in this high traffic of an area, it wasn't the best choice, 
but it is low maintenance, requires hardly anything from me throughout the year. You know, I was gonna give this Japanese maple a little time, the top died out of it clearly, and I cut it back. Um, some of the growth sprouted new growth, and then it's just continued to burn and kind of die back, so I'm gonna remove it. It's kind of a weird shape and kind of a bad shape right here anyway, because it's gotten so wide down here. And now that the middle section is pretty much like needs to be taken down, it's time. Time for a replacement. I removed the impatiens that were in here. There were only two left in this pot and one in that pot. They had uh, dealt with spider mites really bad. They always do in this particular area of my garden. The impatiens by our chicken coop though, clean as a whistle, blooming beautifully. Who knows? But these needed a fall reboot anyway, and I wanted to keep them very simple. So I left the vinca trimmed up. This one was the one who really needed it. This one needed a major haircut. So got that tightened up just a little bit. And I'm reluctant to go too deep in to really shape it when it's still pretty warm out, but it looks way better. And the violas are just a really sweet little touch of color. And then we popped out here. You can see my kangaroo pop-up bag there. So I cleaned up the hosta bed. Now I did not try to do a 100% cleanup like of all the little lantern pods because of that right there. I, they just fall every day, like just a carpet of them. So it's not worth it to spend a ton of time, but I can use the blower because they're so lightweight. They're like paper. Um, they're lightweight and they blow right off of the mulch. So see, they're just this papery material. These all look really good. This is the Be My Sunshine planted those from little uh, bulbs. They're doing great. And these are beautiful. Look at the color on those. These are the Be My First Love. And you can see this bed from the back. I think I'm going to pop more hostas in here. I just think with how uh, much exposure these get to wind, I don't know that they'll ever get to be their huge size. I do have some woo -la -las in here that wanna grow four feet wide but or four to five feet wide i think i just think i'm gonna have to groom groom on them so much every year that they'll probably never get that big i brought this little bird topiary out from here it was getting like uh swallowed by the licorice vine i trimmed them up a tiny bit they have a little bit of burn on them i think from the wind over here but they should be all right i um, blew off this area trimmed back the euphorbia and that's pretty much it oh i did weed over here I weeded right there. Even though it's all gonna change, you gotta still keep up on the weeds, otherwise I'll just keep growing. I also intend to dig up the Hakanakloa, Japanese forest grass. It's all burned because it's exposed to full sun. It was in full shade when I planted them here because of all the trees that we had. Uh, but it'll be fine, I'll just cut it back, replant it this fall somewhere else, and we'll enjoy it next year. And that is gonna be it for today's video. So we got Tuesday zone done, check it off for the week. Now we don't have to even mess with this area, not one little bit until next week, where we'll come back through and it's likely, if we don't get a ton of wind, it probably won't be a huge maintenance chore. I mean, it's usually just about one pop-up bag worth, maybe less, and about an hour. There it is. That's how much refuse I got today. Well, thank you guys so much for watching today's video, today's zone. Um, again, I'm not sure how these videos are gonna come out if we're gonna do them all in a row, um, but we will be back with part three here very soon where I do Wednesday zone and I'll show you everything in that one and what we're gonna do. And you know, every year it's so different. I was thinking about that as I was working through today's zone. I was thinking, you know, well, we're gonna have to rip up the sidewalk. We're gonna have a new, we'll probably take down the fence section. We're gonna redo flower beds. So this zone will change as will the area around the Hartley and the front yard zone. I mean, front yard zone is going to take me hardly any time at all because there's really nothing up there <laughs> yet. Um, so anyway, you know, they just evolve and we just kind of evolve the system with it and it just works really well. Anyway, see you guys in the next video. Bye.